Australia, I'm Mike Raven. Welcome to wonderful Winton in northeastern Victoria, race five of the nine round Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Well, not a lot has changed. Nissan's GTR domination of pole position has continued. Jim Richards has pole position here today, sharing the front row with him, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra. From position number three, Holden fans take hope. It's Wynn Percy from Ford, Dickie Johnson in the Shell Sierra. And from position number five, Mark Scaife in the second Nissan GTR. Well, we've got a power-packed hour of motorsport for you, including the Motocraft Formula 4 drive of the Europe Series and the Australian Production Sedan Championship. And with that field, it's good afternoon to Neil Crompton. Thanks, Mike. It's production car time at Winton, the Ford Australia Cup round three of the championship. Kent Yulden has pole in the Falcon from Jimmy Zerifoss, a similar vehicle. Then Ken Douglas making it three from three for the Fords. Mark Larkham, the Formula Ford whiz in four. Then Peter Fitzgerald, the first of the Commodores from six, car six, Tony Scott. Then Mal Rose, Roland Hill, Paul Fordham and Gary Rogers. We're just about set for a start. It's 15 laps around the Winton Raceway and this should be a boomer, Mike Raymond certainly should be. Mark Osler joins us this afternoon for another edition of Seven Motorsport and Ford looking pretty good here today in their own race. Ford looking very strong, Michael. Yildon's pole time 1.3 seconds faster than pole here last year and that is sensational. Ket Yildon and Jim Zerifoss ready to do action from the front row. Racing and Zerifoss gets off the line like Smokey the Bear as he goes down into the right-hander. Moving to the inside looking for the run was Kent Yildon but that door was shut well and truly in his face as he goes down to the next right hander so it's the Goodyear mounted Jim Zerifoss who leads but ever so close is Kent Yildon this is a good challenge here on the inside can he hold it Yildon up. getting up on the inside of Jim Zerifoss a certain urgency now creeping into uh, this round of the Australian Championship Yildon down on the inside and will novel Zerifoss to the S's. Beautiful pass. It was only a matter of time. Yildon becoming a bit of a Winton specialist, and there he does. Nails Zerifoss under brakes. It's a little bit untidy coming onto the straight, so he's certainly under pressure. Fitzgerald still working away on the back of Douglas, and there in the background you saw Mark Larkham. He's sort of got away now from that other battling bunch. It's four seconds from uh, Kent Yildon to third place, Kenny Douglas, so this battle of the lead is broken up into two separate battles. I think if Fitzy could get by, he would make ground on the leaders, but it's uh, making it a very tough task to get back in touch with the leaders while he's stuck in here with Ken. You do get the impression here that uh, Ken is holding Peter up a bit. It wouldn't be much, but if, you know, if it's a tenth a lap, it's still, it's still uh, enough to nail his progress. The thing that amazes me about the Falcons is how well they use their tyres. <laughs> how, well <laughs> how do the bumpers work? <laughs> Bits of bodywork and dust flying everywhere. Fitzgerald's not mucking about. Uh, he's going to make a tighter exit here onto the straight. And maybe he's come on with a little bit more speed. You, you're only trying, you're praying to come on two kilometres an hour faster so you can make a manoeuvre like this at the end. Now Douglas, by going to the right, actually slows his exit speed. Now Fitzgerald comes back. That's the positioning that he wanted. But he couldn't get away with it. It's all marbly on the outside. And uh, they rub mirrors. A little kissy and off they go again. Scott has gone through. And he's getting a Oops. big serve from Gary Rogers. <laughs> Rose goes a bit agricultural, gets it back on the island. I think Mal's missed the plot there a bit. He's leading the championship with 40 points from Kent Yulden, 25. And I think that uh, Zerifoss, and there's the mistake <laughs> that Peter Fitzgerald's been praying for. Douglas runs wide, Fitzy to third. Still a Ford 1-2 at this stage, Peter Fitzgerald. In the Commodore runs in third place. Kenny Douglas is fourth. That's the order as our leader heads up to uh, Penright corner for the final time. Great day for Ford here today, a 1-2 in the cup race. Round three of the Australian production car championships. And here's Peter Fitzgerald who's been doing a lot of the chasing since this race started. So Ford won't come up with the uh, trifecta. Fitzy has spoilt that. Going to take the Commodore home in uh, third place as our race leader. Kent Yildon comes down the back straight for the final time. Kent's the reigning Australian production car champion. Gives the flag marshals a little wave. He must be pretty confident. <laughs> the Festo Falcon coming down to the S's for the final time. Car number one. So the championship is still well and truly alive. Last corner comes up. Checkered flag at the ready. And it'll be 
Kent Yulin to come up and take the chequered flag. He wins the Ford Australia Cup here today at Winter Motor Raceway. Jim Saravos will take second across the line and Peter Fitzgerald will pick up third place. A great drive to Fitzgerald from well back in the pack. Let's check them out for you on our Shell race score. Kent Yulin, as we said, in the Ford Falcon is the winner. Jim Sarafos in second. Peter Fitzgerald takes third over Kenny Douglas in fourth. And fifth, car number nine, Mark Larkham. Back here at Winton Motor Raceway, we're preparing for the Motocraft Formula 4 Driver to Europe Series this afternoon. Once again, a packed field, 32 starters. Full grid. Let's take a look at the way they line up. From pole, car number six, Troy Dunstan and the Speed Tech Van Diemen. Out of two, it's Cameron McConville and another Van Diemen. John Blanchard starts out of position number three. Michael Dutton from position number four. From five, it's Brett Peters. Expect a big showing from him. From six, it's Andrew Gubb in the Swift. From seven, Andrew Reed in another Swift. From eight, Stephen Yip. From position number nine, Ron Searle. And rounding out the top ten, it's Stephen White in a Van Diemen. Ten seconds away from the start. The Motocraft Formula 4 driver to Europe Series. Troy Dunstan on pole. Cameron McConville alongside. Off and racing. Dunstan gets the break two on the inside. He'll lead them into the first corner. Blanchard trying to get up right behind him. He won't. McConville will slip into second place. Then Blanchard all through the first turn without incident. And the 32 cars are now underway as they go through the right-hander and work their way down towards the sweeper. Look at that field. How good is this kid McConville running in second place? He's only 17 years of age in his third ever Formula Ford race. He started in the first round of the Motocraft Series and didn't finish. He was seventh at Simmons Plains, and here he is qualifying on the front row of the grid against these hot shots. This is quite a show. He's under some uh, initial pressure here from uh, John Blanchard. Michael Dutton away to a fairly good start. Brett Peters away as well, and Dunstan will lead them down the back straight for the first time. Not much in it there. Car number 92 does some rally cross. Gary Gassardi. There's our man in car number 71, Stephen Richards. Mentioned him before. His dad performs for us later in our program. Leading the Touring Car Championship. Stephen's done a lot of karting. And uh, he's turned his hand at Formula Ford more recently. And he's running a respectable 16th at the moment, having a bit of a scrap. If we're going to bring on any of the younger drivers into touring car racing that has to they have to come from uh, one or two categories formula forwards and uh, production cars michael dutton seems to be making a little bit of an impression on this battle now he is but there's nothing he can do about it. he's been fairly close to them but uh it might be wise to sit off these two because <laughs> if frustration shows with blanchard there's going to be cars going in every direction here not saying that he will but he's been all over Cameron McConville last two laps of this race. This is the highest speed corner on the course, sweeping left-hander in the middle of the complex. It's pretty quick, change of direction, hard to settle the car and stop it here without locking up brakes. This is a good bit of pressure driving from McConville. He's uh, seen him drop a wheel off the edge of the circuit so far, but that's about it. He's coming under a lot of pressure from Blanchard. Dunstan has increased his gap to second place to just over two seconds now. So he's certainly making this look quite easy. Not so easy for Brett Peters, though. Notice that Brett's car really slides around as he exits that fast approach to the right-hander of Penwright. And Andrew's car is a little more stable, but gee, he's tried everything to chisel away at Brett Peters. Nothing's working. He hit him over there with a baseball bat suit. <laughs> he's close enough to... Last lap board about to come up now for Troy Dunstan. Here's Cameron McConville, John Blanchard right behind him. They have a couple of lap cars to deal with before they take the chequered flag. Michael Dutton sits back in fourth behind them. Brett Peters and then Andrew Gubb. That's the order as they work the last half lap of this Motocraft Formula 4 driver to Europe round been an extremely impressive performance from Dunstan and I just don't think that Blanchard's going to be able to do anything here about McConville to alter the result for second and third but boy he's giving it everything he can trying hard and Dunstan's closed the gap hasn't he and I'll have a close look at um, Blanchard's swift between the white car there the nose cones uh, 
Looks like it's been a bit dislodged. He's stuck it under the gearbox of McConville's car at some stage. There's Troy Dunstan, our race leader, coming into the S's for the final time. Exciting series, the Motocraft Formula 4 driver to Europe series. Jacket flag at the ready. Here's the man that's going to go on and taste victory. Troy Dunstan, first one across the line. Cameron McConville will pick up second place. John Blanchard, third. Michael Dutton, fourth. Then Brett Peters into fifth. And Andrew Gubb to sixth. Let's check them out for you on our show. Race score as called. Dunstan the winner. Cameron McConville. Great drive that for second from the 17-year-old. John Blanchard third. Michael Dutton fourth. And Brett Peters rounding out the five. And when we return, it's time for the tourers. We're back at Winton Motor Raceway. Thanks to Shell and Dunlop for the Australian Touring Car Championship round here today. It's round number five. Let's take a look at the grid. It has a sameness, doesn't it? Jimmy Richards in the Nissan GTR 10116, our qualifying Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra. Row number two from three, 16 Win Percy in the first of the Holdens from four to 17, Dick Johnson in the Shell Sierra from five to Mark Scaife in the Nissan GTR. From position number six, eight, Colin Bond, the Caltech Sierra from 7.25, Tony Longhurst, the BMW from eight. Car number 18, John Bow in the second of the Shell Sierras from 9.20, Alan Jones, the Benson and Hedges BMW and from 10.05, Peter Brock. Strong looking Phil, Larry Perkins starts out at 11, Terry Finnegan from 12, Bob Pearson from 13, Trevor Ashby from 14. Full field of 16 starters. Round five, can the Nissan steamroller continue? Dickie Johnson, 10 seconds away from the action at Winton Motor Raceway at Benalla. Racing, Richards goes, a look at Scape on the dirt. Trying to get a hold of it and pick up Seaton before the first turn, but he's muscled into third place. Percy goes back to fourth, fifth is Bond. And Dick Johnson has missed out terribly there. In fact, John Bow will probably pick up a point as they stream out of here going up towards the sweeper with Jimmy Richards in front settling into second and a great second too is Glenn Seaton and the Peter Jackson Sierra then comes Mark Scaife who had all sorts of problems yesterday in qualifying I don't know whether these stewards will have something to say about using the grass verge getting off the line and Johnson who started in the second row was actually muscled out before they made it to the first turn Yes, um, Bond, Bow and Johnson all had brake lockups at the end of the pit straight the first time and it looked like there may have been some contact but Scaife's start was unbelievable. He just went straight to the dirt and did some rally cross. Up to third place now so he's clear of Wynn Percy. Richards the leader at the end of lap number one from Seaton. Then it's Scaife in position three, Percy in four, then Bond, Bow, Johnson followed then by Alan Jones, Tony Longhurst, Larry Perkins, Peter Brock, Finnegan and Ashby. The usual rocket start from Richard's GTR. Dick Johnson joked yesterday the only way Seaton will beat him off, off the line is if he turned hard right when the light went green. That's about the only way he'd do it. But Seaton held out Scape as they came into the second corner and he's holding second place now. I think you'll find the first shot we have at the back of the uh, Win Percy car. Probably the back bumper has been dislodged there. I think he got a bit of a hit on the way through into the first turn. There's Glenn Seaton doing a good job staying in touch while attempting to with Jimmy Richards. Mark Scaife is right in behind him as they go up to Penrite. And then uh, Wynn Percy, as we take our Nissan race camp, sits right on the roof of the number two GTR as they come down the back straight to the S's. I wonder um, whether we had the roof cam up and happening when the thing left the line. It would have been pretty spectacular. So Mark now tucked in behind Glenn Seaton and Wynn Percy right behind the Nissan. You'll notice that Glenn does a lot of left foot braking around the Winton circuit and uh, he tends to paddle his feet like he's driving a cart. Carries his brakes in places where you won't see the brake lights on in other places. Okay, they make their way through the right-hander. There's Mark Scaife, the all-wheel drive number two. And most necessary today, trying to get off the starting line and take the Mulga. Let's have a look at this, the restart that Neil called for off the starting line. Let's turn right, get out on the loose stuff and run. And that's exactly what happened for Mark Scaife. I think that was a planned move. But he sits in behind Glenn Seaton's Peter Jackson Sierra. Tries to take advantage of that into the turn, but Seaton closed the door on him. And that's the way they're still running on the road at the moment. That four-wheel drive's handy. The Leyland brothers would have been proud of him. It's going to be interesting to watch the progress of Seaton. He's holding station in second, but if he continues to hold station, he's running some really nice Bridgestone tyres, which he had at Lakeside. Gave him a lot of consistency. They were very durable. And if he can hang on to second place here for a few laps, it's going to be a very impressive showing. He's certainly the class of the Sierra runners at the moment. But look who's ahead of the shell cars. Colin Bond in the Cal 
Celtics CX3 Sierra. He did a good qualifying lap yesterday. The BMWs of Tony Longhurst and Alan Jones well down the field. They're sitting behind the two Johnson Sierras. Uh, some bad luck for Alan Jones, feeling uh, a pretty bad uh, bout of the flu here today. In fact, missed the driver's meeting a while ago. So he went to a camera shop at Benalla and then was told that uh, he'd missed uh, $500 from his pocket for being late. He suggested he could do without the gripe, please, and would pay a 1000 if he could go and do the race, please. Just stupid. I thought he was sitting a little lower in the car. There's obviously less cash in his wallet than this morning. Well, he has been ill. Now look at the performance of the HRT Commodore 2 hanging in fourth place. In the warm-up this morning, Percy was third quickest, uh, way ahead of uh, Glenn Seek. There's uh, Colin Bond going through, then John Bauer, ahead of Dick Johnson, Alan Jones, Tony Longhurst, then the two Brock uh, cars, both he, of course, and Larry Perkins, Terry Finnegan in the Food Town Commodore, and then back behind them, of course, Trevor Ashby in the uh, Dulux Auto Color Holden. Larry Perkins slowed appreciably a couple of laps ago and let Peter Brock by, but now seems to have picked up the pace once again. The lead four cars are starting to stretch a reasonable gap over Colin Bond, and then it's Bow Johnson, as he suggested. But certainly the two Nissans, the Seaton Sierra and the Percy car, all running very close and a comparable lap speed. A chance today, perhaps, for Jim Richards to even lock up the championship? Well, he could do, I guess, and, um, you know, by having Cito in the meat of the sandwich at the moment, stretching the gap points table between the two drivers, the two Nissan drivers, but uh, Mark's going to work pretty hard, obviously, to stop that from occurring. There's no team orders amongst the Nismo boys. You can see, as Mark pointed out before, the plastic on the rear of the Commodore is looking a bit second-hand. There was a lot of elbowing into that first corner. I saw somebody lock up and lurch into the back of the hole, but it doesn't look like it's too drastic. Come out of the essence, they work the finishing straight again here at Winton Motor Raceway where Jimmy Richards, your race leader over Glenn Seat, Mark Scaife and Whit Percy in the VN Commodore car number 16. Point situation isn't as quite as close as this battle at front. At the moment Jim Richards on 75 points, his teammate Mark Scaife 10 points behind on 65 and then a massive gap of 29 points back to Tony Longhurst in third on 36. So you'd be fairly safe to say the Nissans are going to shoot out the championship but just which one? won't know for a while yet. Out of Penright corner, down through the infield section here at uh, Winton. And the order unchanged. Mark Scaife unable at this stage to pull something out and pass uh, Glenn Seaton. Seaton is falling off the tail of Richard's car. With Percy trying to stay in touch with Mark Scaife and then you'll notice the gap back to Colin Bond. And behind Bond there's a second group of cars involving the two Dick Johnson Shell Sierras and the two Benson and Hedges BMWs. There's been a, a lot of talk, Mike, about uh, nobbling the Nissans, but certainly the drivers are, um, are adamant that they're putting in 10 tenths at the moment and they're fighting for each race and each championship point that they can get. And, uh, you know, looking at the proximity of three brands of car here at the moment, there's not much in it. It's hardly fair to want to uh, nobble the Nissans. I mean, a couple of years ago, I've made this point before, everyone was screaming about Dick Johnson winning every race, every round of the Touring Car Championship, and this Nissan just happened to go away, do the right amount of work to come up with a killer car, they've done that. Most of the people screaming, of course, are running Ford Sierras. So you can't nobble them after the fact, but they have really got to look at the uh, Touring Car specifications for 92 and 93 to bring it back to cars that I think the folks can identify with. I think you're right, I think it's a question of looking forward, not back, and uh, you know, if, if they've made a mistake with the rules, then uh, okay, let's change it with uh, the next set rather than having a fiddle. Got. But anyway, that's all politics. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's what the people are talking about out the streets and have been for a lot of... There's the two BMs, and I think these cars are going to thread their way through the pack as this race unfolds. 50 minutes duration, and both Alan and Tony have been complaining across the course of the weekend that they lack a little grip. The car's actually running on Yokohama E-Compound tyres, and if anything, Tony said last night, they'd be much happier if they could get a compound somewhere between what would normally be a qualifying tyre and the tyre they're running on. So they're actually uh, running on their softest race tyre, but it's not soft enough. The car's still slipping around a bit. And uh, even though this is very tight and twisty, lots of corners, what the BM thrives on is, is 
mid speed to fast corners where you can keep it wound up and going. Because of its lack of torque characteristic in the engine, even though you can gear the car better for this circuit, it is hurt by all this stop-go stuff. And I noticed Jones ahead of Longhurst, so that orthoxicol that he's taken, along with a chaser, is doing the world of good. I reckon it would have uh, pumped him up an extra couple of tenths of a second being relieved at 500 bucks before the start of the race. So I there's AJ going through, and right behind him is Tony Longhurst. I just got the clock on Richards as he came across the start finishing line there. He did a 61.9, which is about eight tenths off his pole time. So he's certainly not mucking about out there. How many briefings with Jonesy have gone to in 23 years of motor racing? Do you think he knows what the yellow flag means? Maybe so. We're following uh, one of the mobile Commodores, 05 car of uh, Peter Brock. Not the happiest of seasons settling back into the Holden. But they're getting a little quicker and a little more competitive at each round. Expect the best from both he and Larry Perkins by the time they get to the major event of the season. That, of course, is Mount Panorama at Bathurst for the Tui's 1000 on October 6th. 4.63 seconds the gap from Wynn Percy in fourth to Colin Bond. So that group now uh, really sprinting away. There's Peter Brock getting up on to the back of the BMWs now. And there may have been a change of order, I think, for the two BMs. Brocky was really happy here on Friday. He was fourth quickest, which was a great turn up in the competitiveness of the mobile cars. In qualifying, he got bumped back a little bit, but he says he's getting more and more pleased with the race setup on the car, and he says the full spec BN engine is yet to come. So there's still a fair bit to come for the mobile cars, according to Peter Brock. Here we take our seven sport race cam and Peter Brock's mobile one Commodore, the right-hander past the start finishing line, the downhill run. The tightening right-hander here as he sits behind Tony Longhurst. Just ahead of Longhurst is Alan Jones, Dick Johnson, and leading that pack is uh, John Bow and the number 18 Shell Sierra. It's a pretty busy circuit when you're driving a V8, though. Quinn Percy was saying that the Commodore is a quite a pleasant car to drive around here with all the slow corners. Uh, the normally aspirated engine's got quite good characteristics and makes it very pleasant to drive. No throttle lag as you'd find in a turbo car. It's a good dice, this. We've got four cars. Rocky making up the tail, and they're all trying very hard. There's Tony Long, who's pulling out of the draft again as we pick up on Wynn Percy, the Holden Racing Team VN Commodore. You'll notice that the uh, rear mudguard starting to look pretty messy. In fact, the rear bumper bar, I should say, on the left-hand side. I hope they don't ping him. It's no big deal. Well, with any luck, it might snap off and... Uh, Slide onto the grass, or someone else will join on the tail shortly. You're right, nothing major there. 62.3, the last lap for Jim Richards. So the pace slowing down just a fraction. And Richards now 1.3 seconds clear of Glenn Seaton, and he's got Mark Scape hot on his hammer, and then Win. We look at now. You can see he's tucked in behind Finnegan, who's already a lap down on the leaders. Terry Finnegan there in the Food Town Commodore, number 27. Putting a lap put on him as Wynn Percy down the uh, inside. Glenn Seaton still running a very strong second in the Peter Jackson uh, Ford Sierra. Mark Scape unable at this stage of the race to breeze up on his tail and then uh, giving the blow by on the back straight. Percy got uh, held up quite badly that time by uh, Finnegan, who's now gone to the pits in car number 27, so he's just dropped a couple of tenths off this group. be a frustration for him. Interesting tyre war exists here. We've got Richards on Yokohama, Cito running Bridgestone, and we've got Mark Scape in third position, also Yokohama, and Wynn Percy fourth on Dunlop, and all producing pretty even performance in this early stage of the race with only coming up to 12 minutes down. This is all getting serious Scaife's as Mark Scaife up on the inside of uh, Glenn Seaton takes over second spot. This ends 1-2. Glenn Seaton now back to third. The great advantage the Nissan's had over the Sierra as a race car is its consistency. It'll lap at about the same speeds it does early in the race as it does at the end, whereas the Sierras have tended to drop off to something like two seconds a lap slower than when they started. Seaton with these tyres he's got that he ran at Lakeside says the consistency is so much better that he was only like two tenths of a second slower toward the end than he was at the start. Great to see another huge crowd here at uh, Winton Motor Raceway today. One of the smaller circuits on the national trail for the Shell Australian Championship. A very well promoted and conducted circuit. They pay special attention of getting not only the racing fans into the place, but also out of the place after the show. Maybe that's something that the promoters of Lakeside can do for their next round. Huge crowd there last weekend. But uh, hopefully uh, they'll be able to get the, the 
the fans out typically a, a number of hours after the show. Back to racing, Nissan 1-2. It's been the story all season of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. 1.8 seconds between the two Nissans. So Jim just making an extra gap. Just interesting to notice that the Nissan crew look as though they're preparing themselves for a stop. I have uh, no idea why that would be occurring. There's certainly a bit of activity down with the Nissan boys. Jim Richards comes up onto the pit straight and yeah. uh, continues. Freddy's but, got the uh, Mark's on. game. Yeah, it's Mark's game. It looks like he may be penalised for... Uh, Stop and and is it just a stop go? Yeah, stop go penalty. No, span, no uh, spanners coming out. The car just comes in, stops, and out again. And that would have had something to do with his uh, tractor trip down the inside along the grass at the start. So Scape really joins the circuit just in front of Colin Bond. I tell you what, they waited long enough giving the penalty, though. Like he's fought his way all the way up to pass Glenn Seaton. And then uh, yeah, I would have thought that penalty would have been on within the opening three laps. That's what happens in the States, anyway. So it's Richards, Seaton. Now Escape dropping out as Percy up to third place. Escape in fourth, and Bond in fifth ahead of the two shell cars. It's it's um, a hard one to call, isn't it? I suppose it's a bit naughty to take to the grass, but I've seen those sort of things happen before. But um, anyway, it's going to inject some interest and see whether or not Mark can blaze back through uh, with Percy and Glenn Seaton, he's coming I out think Colin Bond. I think you'll have a very determined Mark Scaife, the, uh, the stop and go call very late, I thought, after it happened. Freddie Gibson, team manager of Gibson Motorsport in the pits. Fred, your thoughts? Not real happy, Mike, I didn't really. Think, didn't think you'd be. No, I can't understand. Like, it's a bit late making that decision. Also, like, uh, OK, that's the start. I was up in the grass, two wheels in the grass. They said four. The stewards here this weekend are sort of getting a bit over cautious, I think, with what they're doing. I'm not real happy with the decision at all, but like I think we'll come back through the field and we'll probably see a good race now. He likes a little aggro. That should almost bring him back up to second, shouldn't it, Freddie? Well, he's had a bad weekend so far with his qualifying yesterday, Mike, and I think really now it's a matter of getting his head down and sort of go for it and see how it goes. Dickie Johnson, car number 17, the Shell Sierra. Things were looking pretty good in qualifying for Dick, but uh, I think he's got problems, correct, Dick? Uh, mate, it's got the mating call, you know? That's no, I'm not going to touch that with a large bump. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, the way it's going, it feels like a seat seat fly. <laughs> What's it got, the whistling turbo, Dick? Uh, no, it's actually, uh, it's obviously got a problem where the boost is stuck on full boost or something, and it, it hits what you call a boost limiter. Doesn't sound too flash. No, she's not real flash, all right? <laughs> Here's old LP, thinks he's doing real good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was quite surprised, Mike, that... There he goes. Yeah, well, I've got to let him go, the poor guy. I'm sort of kind of holding him up. He's, he's the worst guy in the world to get past LLP. Yeah, why's that? He's got the widest car in the world. Are you planning on making a pit stop, Dick? Even the Sierra on one cylinder's got as much grunt as the Commodore. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do? Are you going to come into the pits or stay out and press on? Well, there's not much use to coming in, is there? No, I suppose we just press on and see what happens. Yeah, I just, I just have to change gear at about 3,000 revs or something. But at least I'll give the tyres a workout because uh, these are the new compound things which, uh, surprisingly enough, today are working quite well. The car yesterday and qualified, Dick certainly looked uh, a lot better than 12 months ago when he had all sorts of problems here. Yeah, it was terrible. We came here did a test with Dunlop and we came across a tyre and it sort of worked very well on the test we had here, but but what happened then was that it, it actually uh, went back to Japan. I think they changed the compound a little bit to make it a little stronger and unfortunately it's not quite as good as what the other one was. Alrighty, I'll let you circulate at your favourite racetrack. Oh, God, yeah, it's terrific. What else would you want to do on a Sunday afternoon? Oh, I'd probably be back on a boat somewhere on Morton Bay, wouldn't it? Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> Thanks for the chat, mate. Righto, Bill. Meanwhile, back at the front, Richard's still in first place. I'm uh, five seconds ahead of seat, and I think I had him on my clock last time around, so opening the gap all the time on the Peter Jackson car. And we've now got the scrap developing between Scape and Percy for third place. They're coming up onto the pit straight. So it's Richards by five seconds from Seaton. 
and then about three seconds back to Percy and he's got Scafie all over him at the moment and then it's a very big gap back for the next bunch. That's headed by Colin Bond and then the two BMs nose to tail. Let's take a look at Shell Race Score confirming Jim Richards leads. Glenn Seaton in second place, Wynn Percy in third being hounded by Mark Scafe. Colin Bond runs fifth. We're 19 minutes into the race and back soon with more motorsport from Winton. Now the back straight. Pulls to the outside quickly. Runs up alongside the door of Wynn Percy. Wynn's in no mood to settle and give him a run, but uh, he does at the last moment. That was a good pass from Mark Scaife. Good pass. He's still got a few cars to get by. Jim Richards, the race leader. Glenn Seaton sitting about 10 car lengths back behind him. And, of course, the one that's gone off there, Trevor Ashby. He and Bob Pearson, I think, had a coming together there. See what's happening in the middle of the pack. Colin Bond, the Caltech CXT Sierra, John Bow behind him. Then there's Peter Brock, 05 the Mobile Commodore. We take race cam riding with Brocky. I'm not going to talk to him. Last weekend when I spoke to him, he nearly speared through the fence at Lakeside, so he wanted to throttle me at the end of the day. It's a busy place, Winton, as you can see. It's tight and twisty. Difficulty with the Commodore is you don't want to um, burn up your rear tyres with vigorous use of the right foot. Peter's having a good scrap here at the moment. It's Bondi. Peter's in ninth place at the moment. Just ahead of him is John Bow, and ahead of him is Colin Bond. Whoop, whoops. Whoa. That was close, Brocky. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Even the experience can be all arms and legs at times. <laughs> Peter had a big lock up into the right hand and then had the thing all uh, locked up and not very comfortable. Hope he didn't flat spot a tyre in the process. Next that weekend, the mobile team head out on an intensive tyre testing program. Brocky will be picking up some new Bridgestone tyres to try on the Commodore. And he's expecting some uh, good things from those. Glenn Seaton's forms anything to go by with his Bridgestones, I'd say. Uh, Rocky can look forward to good things ahead. Oh. Bob Holden getting the squeeze put on him at the end of the pit straight. Oh, Colin Bond doing a good job in the uh, Haltech CXT car, the consistent forward runner for the last three years. A couple of wins in last year's championship. Winner of Lakeside, winner of Malala. And uh, Always impressed by Colin's car control. Smooth as silk, isn't he? Not forgetting, of course, last year Jim Richards uh, won this race. That was back in the more conventional two-wheel drive Nissan. Tony Longhurst and Alan Jones were second and third in Sierras. And Seaton was actually fourth here in another Ford. It's, it's all it. different this year with um, Jones and Longhurst in front of this battle, in front of Bondi, in the little BMs. hunting ground for uh, Team Nissan, the Winton Motor Raceway. The other thing that's happening is Wynn Percy's losing touch quite dramatically now with the front three, and he's rapidly being hauled in by Tony Longhurst. In front of this group here, and you've also got uh, Mark Scape closing on Glenn Seaton, so a couple of little battles developing within at the moment. It's still the maestro at the head of the pack, Jim Richards. There's Alan Jones. Coming up now to 28 minutes in this race. As we said before, Alan relieved of a quick 500 for missing the driver's briefing today. Putting him in a good frame of mind. Just the sort of situation AJ loves. Well, the gap between Seaton and Richards is out to four seconds, but Scape is really starting to close on Seaton now. This is an excellent showing from Seaton. Sierra now in its fifth year of competition suggests that its uh, development curve is starting to flat out. The seat is getting more and more out of his car as the year goes on. Here's the scrap I spoke about before with Tony Longhurst getting closer to the back of Win Percy's car. We've talked on many occasions this year about the consistency of the BMW. Neither Tony nor Alan happy that they have a soft enough race type for this track this weekend. And look at Tony probing up the inside and makes the space and quickly goes underneath. Wynn was uh, 
pretty casual then in his defence, so I'd suggest that he's unhappy with the grip that his car's got and uh, not really interested in putting up a fight knowing that Tony's going to get him anyway. So uh, a slightly dejected win, Percy, I'd suggest. Here's the top of Nissan uh, GDR. GDR. That's it. I couldn't <laughs> think of the name of the rotten thing. And uh, Mark Scaife at the helm, chasing Glenn Seaton. Keeping in mind that Scaife has had that stop and go penalty. He's come clawing his way back through the field. He looks to poke the nose down a little show and tell here with Glenn Seaton. Mike, what you see from this view is how effective the Nissan is out of tight corners. Watch when it comes out of Penright, which is the next right-hander, how much room Mark can play in where the Seaton can't. Look at this. Yeah. Just and then when he stops on the gas, he just goes and off she goes. All the grip in the world and a pretty casual pass into second place. Very impressive motor car. It's going to be interesting to keep the watch on Richards too to see if Scaife uh, perhaps pushes Jimmy on to greater things as far as lap times are concerned. I think Jim Richards is the master of winning races at the slowest possible speed, but if Scaife wants to make him work for it, he certainly will. Incidentally, Alan Jones has now got past Win Percy. Uh, so a bit disappointing for Holden Racing Team because I I know that um, the testing here last year with their old car was very good and the early speed uh, earlier in the week was very good with the car but it's just chewing its tyres up now at too great a rate and dropping back through the field. There's the gap, we've had first and second go through. See Tony's getting closer, he's still wearing all these guys away but it's 38 minutes in. Um, he does it every time. Yeah, he will not give up. He was praying that they had a, a tyre that might have been able to do the job, but the e compound's just a little bit too hard for this weekend. There's Jones going through, his Percy. Percy going through, one of the Toyota Corollas. Bondi's still holding on to the bow, and Peter Brock back there, I think eighth place. That gives you an indication of how they have spread out around uh, Winton Raceway here at Vanalla, uh, as Dick Johnson about to have a lap put on him by our race leader, Jimmy Richards. Dick has all the problems in the world. As you'll recall when we spoke to him earlier, he'll let uh, Richards go around the outside. They come down to the right hand at the start of the S's. To the shell cars aren't having the best of touring car seasons, and uh, Glenn Seaton in the last few rounds has certainly made them look ordinary sorts of uh, engine problems it seems and um, Dick would be a happy man at the moment. 62.2 for Mark Scape on that lap and Richo is 62.4 so he's still nibbling away at the margin. He certainly turned out a good product. I must admit I've been surprised at just how well the Nissan uses its tyres. It's the heaviest car in the field, 1360 kilos. But it wouldn't have done, uh, I, it would not have done another two or three laps at Lakeside last weekend. I had a look at the tyres at the end of that and they were absolutely sh pieces um, so they could not have calculated any finer that's okay. not encouraging sound is it some skin. <laughs> Colin Bond that was with the, the rear brakes there all he locked goes. up oh. and he's still having strike oh. and it's still going and and laughing jack it was about a 400 litre lose there <laughs> Bondy gathers it up Bauer takes the position away from him and I wonder what was going on there that started at the end of the back straight <laughs> that was like a 15 second lose for Bondy he got he had it all locked up sideways into the right hand at the end of the back straight and then he ran wide through the next bit of the S's and then got out of the dirt. Here he is on the marbles as we show you on the replay then he catches the ripple strip and it flicks the car back the other way. JB would have had to go back to first gear here like which way was he going to go and then they all got on with it once again and the order's now reversed. 18 leads 8. He's bound the 18 car. Tries to uh, get away from Colin Bond. Bond has actually picked it up again. I think that's probably where the only uh, dice in the race is. There's Glenn as we pan our Dunlop race cam out the tail of the uh, the number 17 car. Coming up for the run down the back straight now. You should see Seaton switch to the inside. Here he goes. See you later, Dick. So, one lap put on Dick Johnson by young Glenn Seaton. That'll cap off a great 20 birthday today because he's going to get a slice of the rostrum again. Well, we're halfway through the Australian Touring Car Championship and that usually means that Bathurst is a fairly short time away. As far as Sierra is concerned, this will be the car to watch up there. Nearing the end of a fairly intensive three-year development and the car is looking very strong. Certainly the class of the Sierra field in 1991.
Today, of course, round five of the Shell Australian Championship. The next round will be held at Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. The first time the racers from the championship all turn up at uh, Amaru Park for the season to run the next round on Sunday, June 2nd. With rounds to follow at uh, Malalalala in South Australia. And, of course, a return to uh, the picturesque Lakeside Raceway in Queensland. Then back to the grand final, of course, at the traditional Sydney venue, Warren Park Raceway on the 11th of August. Longhurst is uh, 1.5 seconds behind seat. And so having a big go as well. Doing his usual trick of grinding them down. And this will be very close as they come toward the end of the race. He's closing at such a rate. You would tend to think that Tony's in this with a huge go for uh, third place. He's on the boil. The, str the strength, of course, of the, uh, the BMW. It's the closing stages of the event. At the moment, though, no one is going to lay a finger on Jim Richards. I make it 48 minutes into this event, so we're getting very close to curtain time. Richards comes down to the S's. This will stick another 20 points on Jim's total. That'll take him to 95 in the championship. Mark Scape stays where he is, which I assume he will. That'll be 80 points, but I'm not going to put any uh, mathematics on third and fourth just yet. I suspect this to be the last lap, keeping in mind they are timed races. So Jimmy Richards, number one, Nissan GTR, the all-wheel drive twin turbo express, storms down towards Penrite Corner. Mark Scaife giving chase after him, Glenn Seaton and uh, Tony Longhurst locked in a thrilling battle, but I think it will probably go to Glenn Seaton. How good is Jim Richards have been, eh? Fourth pole and his fourth win. Yep, very well-deserved. About to come off this turn down the long back straight. It is only long because it's the <laughs> just longer than the other little uh, connectors to the turns here at the Winton. S's for the final time, last corner coming up. Checkered flag at the ready, and it'll be Jimmy Richards to come out of the last turn. Here he comes, and the fifth round at Winton goes to Jimmy Richards. Teammate Mark Scaife takes second. And third place is in fact going to go to Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra, car number 30. Fourth to Tony Longhurst in the BMW, car number 25. Outstanding drive to Richards. Superb driving to Mark Scaife here this afternoon, who had that stop and go penalty. Let's check them out for you on the Shell Race score. Jimmy Richards takes round five. Mark Scaife places second. Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra third. Tony Longhurst fourth. And Alan Jones rounds out the top five. Back at Winton. Jacksons have done it again, but wasn't there some urgency in those opening few laps? Let's first of all go to third place and uh, forget about the motor racing. It's happy birthday, Cito. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. What about a quick round of applause, gang, for his birthday? Cito. Nice way to, uh, to finish after all that hard work and uh, you're back up there, you've the best of the rest once again, that must be very pleasing. Yes, it is very pleasing, um, it's quite a good birthday present as well. Um, I, I hope to have got on the podium today just for my birthday and um, also the tyres held up well. Over the Christmas break we forgot about the Nissans and, and uh, worked on our car to make it hopefully uh, potentially fast. Well, certainly fruits for all that homework and uh, have a good evening this evening and we'll look forward to seeing you again in about a month's time and keep those candles going. To second place, and um, Mark Scaife, I guess you're a pretty frustrated man, although it was a fabulous drive back through the field. Yeah, no, I think that's probably the hardest I've worked for a fair while, Crompo. It's uh, off the line, you know, we were lucky enough to get down the grass there and not get punted out, and uh, uh, then to have stop and go and come back through uh, made us work pretty hard for our money. Were you really cheesed when you got the the message from Fred that you, uh, that you had to come back in? I suppose that would have been uh, pretty crueling, because at that stage you were certainly matching Jimmy's pace. Yeah, it was pretty crueling, but it's one of those things that's motor racing and all you can do is, uh, is get back on with the job again. There's no use hanging around being frustrated and uh, I'd have to say that Glenn and, and Wynn were all pretty fair. It was very good, actually. Tough weekend for you, but we look forward to seeing you at Amaru Park and whether or not you can tag this man, the winner of the fifth round. Congratulations, Jimmy Richards. And, uh, well, another fabulous drive, that's all we can say. Yes, no, the car went terrific. Tyres held up Yokohama's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm glad Scaife got a minute uh, penalty, otherwise I might have had to work a lot harder. But uh, no, great drive and 
of course, uh, as you're probably knowing, all the, the GDRs are available on the road as a road car now, so uh, <laughs> Ever the no, sales, but, anyone can buy them. Oh, I'm going to tell you, a shocking thing. <laughs> Early in the race, you had to work pretty hard. It looked to me very much as though both Glenn and Wynn had the, had the measure of the Nissan. Yes, my tyres took a little while to, uh, to sort of get up to, to, to the right heat. And uh, when they did get there, then they started to go away. So, I mean, I, it might look like I was cruising around, but I wasn't. I was trying to conserve the tyres because they weren't quite up to the pace that I would have liked. Can you maintain this perfect score? Well, I hope so, yes. That's what we're, that's what we're in racing for, and that's what isn't in racing for. So, uh, we hope we can keep going. All right, Jim. Well, um, what can we say? We've got to stop meeting like this. Tom Smith from the Shoal Australia Company to make the presentation and uh, place the sash. A marvellous performance from, uh, from Jimmy. Congratulations on yet another magnificent drive. Thank you. So, Jim Richards wraps up the fifth round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. And, of course, next weekend he heads off to Monaco with Wynn Percy to have a drive in a Jaguar XJR15. So, Jim, best of luck over there for you. And for seven motorsport fans, we're actually going to be taking a break for a few week weeks and taking a rest. So we do hope that you can join us when we reach you again from Amaru Park with round six of the Touring Car Championship. The 1991 Shell Australian Touring Car Championship is proudly brought to you by Shell and Dunlop, the world's best road-holding tyre.